friends, it's Christy. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be making a card using Hello Bluebirds Bloom and Grow. So I've stamped those images out on Spectrum Noir Ultra Smooth Premium White Cardstock with Lawn Fawn Jet Black Ink. And I'm going to be choosing some pattern paper to color match to from the Cardabella Flora Number no. 6 paper pad. So I'll just tear that off and tuck that under the cardstock panel. I'll be coloring my images with Copic markers and I'm going to start with the bear. For him I went with E42, E43, E44, and E47. Starting with that E47 and laying in my shadows for him. Since he's facing mostly forward, his shadows will be pretty even on the left and the right, just slightly more prominent on that left hand side since he's a little bit shifted toward the right. So once I have that E47 laid in, I'm going to come in with the E44 and I'll begin to blend that out, but I'm keeping those darkest two shades really close to the outside edges of the image because I don't want him to get too dark. That E47 especially is quite dark, so I didn't want to uh, kind of lose the definition of him. I'm going to be really careful coloring around the floral bouquet, kind of getting in there between the leaves and the flowers, but not coloring over them. So I'm um, just using the very tip of my marker and light pressure to get in those little nooks and crannies so that I can color in his belly. And then I'm going to come in with the next shade, which is the E43. So you could probably leave off the E47 if you didn't mind having a little less definition in those creases and just use the lightest three shades and I think that would still look nice. I just typically prefer um, a lot of contrast in the coloring. So once I've used that E43, I'll bring in the E42, especially on the face. I want to keep the face nice and light so you can really see his features. So I'm just making sure to catch the edge of the previous shade and blend that out nicely. Also onto his chest there and a little bit on his front arm and front leg. And then for his muzzle, I wanted that to be even lighter, so I used the E41 to fill that in. And then I did do a second layer on him. I'm also going to take the darkest two shades, that E47 and then the E44, and add a little dirt into the flower pots, just to kind of ground those plants a little bit more. And I will also use those same shades to color in the bodies of my butterflies. So just a little bit of that darkest shade first and then blending up onto the face with the lighter one. For the mole, I decided to use the toner grays. They're a nice in-between of the warm and the cool grays. So I thought that might be good for this little critter. I'm using T3, T5, and T7. And again, keeping that darkest color on the back of his body and then blending forward with the lighter shades. That way by the time I end up over his eye, I'll be using my highlight shade, which is that T3, just to keep him nice and light as well. And then I'm also going to color the black stripes of the B with these same three shades. So I'm just putting that T7 down toward the bottom and the T3 up on the top. Next, I'm going to move on to my fox. I'm going to use YR12, YR14, and YR18. This is my favorite combo for foxes. I just think it looks really nice because it's not too bright. It's got a little bit of a brown undertone mixed in there. So I think it works great for critters. And for this guy, I decided that I wanted to leave his belly white as well. Usually I do color that in with the orange shades, but I wanted to try something a little bit different today. So I'm just being careful to pick where I'm gonna place those darkest shades. So I did his shadows on the right hand side since he's facing left. I did those with the YR18 and then I'm blending out with the YR14. 
and then I'll come in with the YR12 to fill in the rest of the orange places. And I'm gonna stop short on his hands and his feet so I can give him little white socks. And I also will do his tail separately as well, just to, um, just to divide that up a little bit more, I guess, and only have to concentrate on one part at a time. So again, I just repeated those shades, putting the YR18 on the underside and the highlight on the top where the sun would hit. And then for the white areas, I'm gonna use E000 and E00. So in his ears, on the bottom of his tail, sides of his face, and then I'm gonna kind of transition from those orange areas into the white of his belly. I'll blend out the E00 with the E000, and then I'll still leave some of that, just the plain white cardstock for the highlight. I'll also use those same shades for the nose and the little paws of the mole. I did add a little extra of that E00 in there to darken that up. And then I'm gonna move on to my bunny. I'm gonna use E51, E53, E55, and E57. And I'm starting with the E57. I was going to do one ear to be a little bit lighter just to give him more personality, but I ended up not liking how that looked, so I will fix that in just a little bit, but that's why I didn't color that one ear just yet. Once I had the E57 laid in though, I blended that out with the E55, just pulling that color forward, and his shadows are going to go on the left since he's facing toward the right just keeps it simple and keeps their faces nice and highlighted. So then I'll bring in the E53 to pull that color forward even more. And then I'm leaving a little bit of space there for the E51. And there you can kind of see how I did one ear a bit lighter, but I don't know, it just looked a little odd for this particular bunny, so. Bunnies are so much fun to color because there's so many different ways you can do it, but I decided to uh, fill that in, which I'll show in just a minute. But I also added in a little E50. He needed a bit more uh, light areas there on the lower part of his face and his belly and a little bit on his tail and the inside of his ear. And then I just went back and colored that other ear to match. And then I'm using YR000, YR00, and YR01 for the little worm. And just coloring him in with those three shades. And then for the stripes, I'll go back in with the YR02 and just fill in some of those to give him a bit of contrast. Then I'll take the R01 and the R02 to give all of these guys some rosy cheeks. For the darker critters like the mole and the bear, I only use the R02 because that's all I needed. But for the bunny and the fox, I use the YR01 to blend that out. I also added some of that to the insides of some of their ears. And I did give the bee and the worm some rosy cheeks as well. For the rest of the B, I'm going to use Y11, Y13, and Y15. Just pulling in some of those yellows from that pattern paper. I put the Y15 down toward the bottom, and then I'm blending up with the other two shades. And I'll also fill in some of the centers of the flowers. And I also added two yellow tulips to the wheelbarrow that the bear is pushing. And uh, I used just the darkest shade for the centers of the flowers, but all three shades on the tulips. And then I'm going to use R12, R14, and R17 to pull in that kind of reddish coral flower in that pattern paper. And I'll do two more of these tulips with those shades. And I'm also going to do the watering can that the fox is holding. I thought that might be a nice object to have in a bright, happy color. Um, I have a couple different watering cans that I use. Mine are green and black, but I think a red one would be nice too. 
I also have a blue one that is shaped like a gnome, so they can come in all different colors and styles. But anyway, I just put the R17 on the outside edges since it's a round object and blended toward the center with the R14 and then use that R12 for a highlight. Next, I'm gonna do the wheelbarrow and I decided to go with green. Ours is green, like green metal. So I went with G21, G24, and G28. Adding in that G28 down toward the bottom and in those really skinny places where there's not room for much more color. And then I'm gonna blend that out with the G24 and fill in the rest of that space with the G21. And then I also wanted to color in some of the greenery. There's quite a bit there, so I'm just kind of picking a few little places between the leaves to use that G21 to make it look like there's a lot of foliage there. And then I'll switch to that G28 and do a few of the leaves to give it a bit more contrast. And because I'm using only that darkest shade, they stand out from the wheelbarrow. And then a couple of these other leaves, I decided I would use two shades. So I just started with the G28 and blended out with the G24. And then for that larger leaf that the bunny is holding, I added the G21 into that one as well. For the rest of the greens, I'm going to use YG11, YG13, and YG17. Since the first combo was a little bit more cool toned, I decided to go with something that had a bit more of a yellow cast to it. So that's why I chose this combo. And I did the kind of lettuce style leaves that are poking out of the pot up top. But I'm also going to do some more of the greeneries here and there, filling in some of them with just the YG17 on its own, and some of them with the YG13. Just kind of picking and choosing little places to add different shades of green to make it look really full and vibrant. Next, I wanted to pull in some of those soft indigo flowers in that pattern paper. So I went with V25 and V28. I did decide to pull in the V22 as well, just to lighten those up a bit. And I'll just do a couple little flowers here and there, kind of hopping around the scene and picking a few different flowers so that there'll be little pops of that color around the card. And then I'm going to switch to the warmer purple in that pattern paper using V91 and V93. I just used the two shades for this combo, but I did go back and add a little extra of that V93 to add some extra depth. And uh, just blended that out a little bit with the V91 once again. And then I'm gonna to switch to R81, R83, and R85. This time I'm trying to pull in that dusty rose shade of flowers that are in that pattern paper. Um, I think this pattern paper was a really good choice for a gardening scene like this one because there was a lot of different color choices to pull from and I think it was really fun to try to tie them all in. I also used that for one of the little flowers in the pot and then went back and colored the little um, center with the E43 and E44. I also used that for the dirt underneath the little mole, just blending that out a bit. And then I'm gonna go back to my T3, T5, and T7, because I forgot to color in the wheel when I had those shades out earlier. So I just put the T7 on the outer edge and then blend it out with the T5. And I'll use the T3 in the center there. I also needed to color in the little garden rake. And this time I'm just gonna use the T3 on the T5 just add a little of that depth in there and then blend that back out with the T3. And then I'm gonna move on to BG10 and BG11, pulling in those aqua flowers in that pattern paper. 
I'll use that for one of the butterfly's wings and also the bee's wings and the little flowers that are um, in the more towards the center there. I did two of those with those shades. And then there's some very soft pink flowers in that pattern paper. So I used R000 and R00 for the other butterfly and that last flower. And then I'm going to use Y13 and Y15 for the handle of that little hand rake. For the terracotta pots, I went with E93, E95, and E97. Makes them look a little bit like aged terracotta, which I thought would be nice. These could also be colored in bright, fun colors. They could be made of plastic, um, whatever you decide to go. But I just thought that the colors would be nice to be concentrated on the flowers and then just have these more neutral looking pots so that it didn't get too busy with color. And I tried to do the shading on those just depending on what critter was holding them or where I was planning to put them on the scene. And I did do a second layer of one of those pots just to make it a little bit darker for some contrast. Then I grabbed my black Sakura Jelly Roll pen to go over the eyes of all of my critters. Um, I even went over the worm's eyes, but they were a little bit too small, so I did end up stamping him again and coloring him because it was just a little bit too much. But I'm going to trim these images out with their matching dies. For my background, I'm starting with a piece of Bristol Smooth Surface cardstock. And I'm going to use the Lawn Fawn Cloudy Stencil to create a little sky background using some Tumbled Glass Distress Oxide ink. I wanted to go super pale to match the aqua that was in that pattern paper. So I'm just using that really, really light shade. And this time I'm going to put my clouds a little bit closer together than I normally would because the areas that you're going to see it are going to be pretty small on the card. So I wanted to pack in as many clouds as possible into those little windows. You'll see what I mean when we get to the die. I actually did a video last Friday um, kind of laying out this card and figuring out the idea for it. So if that's something that would interest you or would be helpful to you to kind of see how I figure out the design of a card, you might want to go back and watch that one and then this is the card being brought to life from that original idea. I did add a little extra blue down at the bottom and then I also wanted to splatter to add some interest to the background. So I just pressed some of that ink onto an acrylic block, added some water to that, then I mixed it up with a paintbrush and tapped that off the side to get some nice droplets all over. And then once I was happy with those, I'm going to set this panel aside to dry. I also have two smaller strips that I trimmed down with the Hello Bluebird Grassy Knoll dies. And I'm going to add some green Distress Oxide inks to these. I'm going to add Twisted Citron at the top so it'll be nice and vibrant. And I'm going to do that on both panels exactly the same. And then for the darker shade, I went straight to Rustic Wilderness. This is quite a bit darker, so it wouldn't have hurt to use a transition shade in between, like maybe mowed lawn. But I decided to just make it work since it was such a small little strip, and some of this is going to be covered up as well by the dye. So I just did my best to blend those two together, working back and forth until I was happy with it. So I did that on the top one, and then I'm just going to repeat the same process for the bottom one. Just working back and forth between those two ink blending tools. And then, of course, you can add a little bit of splatter to kind of disguise any little bits where it's not perfectly blended, but also just to add in that interest and tie it to that background with the cloudy panel. So I'll just mix up just the darkest shade, that Rustic Wilderness, and splatter that all over the background as well. And then I'll set these two panels aside to dry. 
And in the meantime, I'm going to go back to my pattern paper pad, that Flora number six from Cartabella, and choose one more print to combine with the one that we used as the color inspiration. Both of these prints I'm going to trim down using the Hello Bluebird Gallery Frame number seven. And then I'm gonna pop out the inner part of each of those and swap the two. So you actually get two frames when you die cut this out of two different pieces of pattern paper. I will flip those over and just tape them back together using some regular scotch tape. And I like to tear the strips in half because they're a little bit too wide to use full on. And then I don't have to use as much either because it's exactly the length that I need. I can just tape those back together. And I will do that for both of these panels so that they're ready to go. But I'm only going to use the one that is on the right for today's card. And I can save the one on the left for something in the future. So I'll just add that last little piece of tape and then I'm going to add some foam tape to the back of this as well so that I can pop it up on the card. So to assemble this card, I'm going to start removing some of that foam tape just a little bit at a time because I didn't want the background to be too sticky or the frame to be too sticky, I guess. And then I'm just lining up that grassy border with the foam tape and the foam tape is going to grab a hold of that. Now for the top one, I did have to remove almost all of the rest of that um, foam tape liner just to be able to add that one. So again, just lining that up and then I can see that it's going to fit perfectly. I'm just going to add some liquid glue to the back of the grass. And then I can line that up over the cloudy background and press that down into place once I've got that lined up nice and straight. Then I'm going to pop this panel into my Misty so I can stamp my sentiment and I'm using Versafine Onyx Black ink. So I've got that frame nestled down in that bottom corner to make sure that uh, I can line it up perfectly both times. And I had a little spot on one of those L's that wasn't inked up correctly, so I did stamp that down a second time. And then for the card base, I trimmed down a piece of craft cardstock to be five and a quarter by ten and a half, and then scored it in half at the five and a quarter mark, so it's five and a quarter by five and a quarter, which is the same exact size as the Hello Bluebird Gallery frame number seven. So I'm going to take a sentiment and a couple extra images and just line those up in the center of the card. And then I can close the door of my Misty to pick those up. I'll ink them up with some walnut ink from Lawn Fawn. And then I'm going to stamp those down a couple of times to make sure I have a nice dark impression because that ink does dry back just a little bit. So I want to make sure it was nice and bold. And then I can pop that out and start assembling my card. So I'm gonna add some liquid glue to the back of that panel. And uh, my glue got clogged up there for a second, but I got it flowing again. And I'll line up those corners to just make sure it's on there nice and straight. You don't wanna have a wonky card under there, so making sure that that's straight. And then I can bring in my images, and I'm gonna do a mixture of liquid glue and foam tape. So first I'm just laying out the main critters of my scene, just like I did in that previous video. Um, just putting them back in the spaces that I had them. And I'm figuring out where exactly I want the mole to go. And because that die kind of cut out the ground underneath him, I wanted to add a little bit more brown there so I did use my E44 and E43 markers to kind of just add a little bit extra dirt underneath him and I did get a tiny bit of ink on that pattern paper with that marker but I just used my colorless blender to clean that up so it was no big deal. So now I'm going to start adding in the rest of the images. The other critters are going to get popped up with some foam tape 
but most of the accessory images will just get liquid glue. So before I add the bunny, I actually wanted some flowers that were going to go behind him. So I just made sure which flowers I wanted those to be. I actually did switch that out from the original layout in the other video. Um, I just decided to use the bigger patch next to the mole and the little bit smaller patch next to the bunny. So I'll just um, get those figured out and then I can pop that bunny down in place. And then I wanted to put those extra little terracotta pots on his right. So I'm just nestling those back behind him. And then I'm just going to fill in the rest of the scene with these little accessory images. I'm going to give the little flower in the pot to the fox so he can be watering that. I'm going to put the little worm down in front of the flowers by the mole. The gardening tool that I had there, I'm going to put that up by the fox just laying there on the ground to fill in some of the space down below that. And then the um, everybody except for the mole because he has the sentiment in the sky. They're all going to get one of these little bugs in the sky. The bear is going to get the bee because he's buzzing over that large cluster of flowers. And then the fox and the bunny will each get a butterfly. So I'm just popping those all up with some foam tape. And then I wanted to bring in a little bit of stickles to add some glitter. I'm going to put that on the butterfly's wings and also the bee's wings. And then I did decide to add just a little bit to all of the flowers as well. So I didn't cover the whole flower, but just a little accent on a few of the petals or on the base of the flower, just to have a little extra sparkle. I think that just adds something nice to the card. So that is going to finish it off. So I will lift that up to the camera so you can see all of that detail and how that sparkles in the light. And I'll give you another peek at the inside as well. And that is going to finish this one off for today. I really hope that you guys enjoyed it. Like I said, if you want to see that other video where I planned out this card, you can check that out. I will link it down at the end. And uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. If you're interested in any of the products I use, you'll find them listed and linked for you in the description bar below. And if you'd like to keep watching, here are two extra videos I thought you might also be interested in. Subscribe if you'd like to be alerted whenever I post a new video, and I'll see you soon in the next one. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.